exciting. So we have four returning and um, three new, and it's just such an opportunity for all of us to build team together because it's a new board. Even though there are four returning, it's a new board, new dynamics, and, and um, folks who come in, whether returning or new, have um, priorities, things that they'd like to move forward. So it's a conversation as a team to try and determine how we best move forward in a way that addresses what we do as governors. So you won't see us in um, schools or classrooms, most of the buildings in, um, in the division, but you will see us through, example, uh, curriculum has changed in, or will be changing the implementation. And so trustees were part of writing letters and advocating on behalf of, um, of the students and folks who are, who are in the division. So those are some of the places where the governance work really shows. roles for the trustees is looking within our own six assurance elements. So there are elements that are in the plan and we have governance assurance elements and so we look to those and how did we do and where can we do better and and in the AERR, the Annual Education Results Report, we report on those. Um, so that was approved just recently. This is a temporary fix to something that has to be dealt with beyond what our powers can do. Thank you, Chair. And it's a short-term solution. It's not one that can be sustained. It's, it's a decision that we will talk next time we meet with our MLAs, and that's in, um, in December, early January, and we will provide them with the information about why we had to move right now. Um, to move to operate outside that envelope but we just can't sustain that. Our contracted bus operators have faced some serious challenges, increases um, in insurance so they've gone from a couple of years ago busing insurance a thousand per bus to six thousand per bus. Um, you, you, you just can't sustain that. We have to safely it's our responsibility as a board to safely get kids to school and so um, looking at those costs of insurance, looking at the cost of fuel, looking at the shortage of drivers, all of the issues that, that they're facing and we, we couldn't just look away from that and say well that's you know that's too bad because now that means you have to operate, we have to operate and give you dollars outside of that transportation funding. I also just want to say a huge thank you to, um, to students, whether they're learning at home or remotely, in school, in person. Um, just to thank them for all of the work that they've done to follow the rules and the procedures and the measures to keep themselves safe and, and others safe as well. And to staff who, um, whether they're in the schools, whether they're in buildings that are in um, Parkland School Division, a, th a thank you to them for helping to support um, each other and helping to helping them to support students if they work with students. And to our parents, to our um, they they have been such a strong supporter and encourager all the way along to make sure that we reach a common goal of student safety and and well-being. And then to our community and our partners, they remind us that it is about a community village to keep all of us um, protected and to keep all of us safe. So as we go into a winter break, I would just like to just to um, just to wish everyone peace and calm and uh, rest and have a nice breath to be able to go into 2022. Parkland School Division, where the world opens up.